or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroidery is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Welcome to Game 23 here on the 2023 Tenora Rams Boys Baseball Season. Coming up live from Group Field here at Tenora High School, Church Tenora Rams taking on the Delta Panthers in a non-conference contest. at Senior Day 2023. Rams have a senior class of six. Luke Harris, Corbin Castile, Ty Whipkin, Eli Plasman, Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward playing here senior night. Rams still have two more scheduled home games. That is tomorrow here versus Archibald and Friday they will play the winner of Ottawa Hills and Delta which we'll get into that in a little bit but senior night here for the boys but they technically still have two home games remaining. Rams come in from the GMC Green Metal Conference while the Delta Panthers they come in from the NWOL the Northwest Ohio Athletic League. Rams coming at 18 and 4 Finished their GMC season at 5-3. and three. The most recent coaches poll, Rams came in at Division 3, the 18th ranked team in the state. Wayne Trace is 16th, so Rams actually made it into the coaches poll this week, coming in at number 18. Panthers visiting Panthers of Delta. They come in at 4-18, and 18, and for the second straight season, they finished 0-7 in conference play. Looking at the week that was, last Tuesday from Wauseon, the Rams with a 6-3 win. Caden Radzik started. Mason McQuillan came in for three and a third of perfect relief in the Rams win. Thursday, Rams with an 8-1 win over Bluffton here at Sonora. Eli Plasman with a fantastic game on the mound. Friday versus Bryan, probably the pitching performance of the year. Corbin Castile dominated. 1-0 win for the Rams in the bottom of the seventh inning. Caden Radzik with a RBI single scoring Aiden Mosier, but Corbin Castile retiring 19 straight hitters at one time and just allowing the one to hit. And Saturday here versus Miller City, Hunter Bosselin picked up his first win, an 8-2 win over the Miller City Wildcats. Since 2000, Rams and Delta, Tenora is 5-1 in six contests. Welcome to the Signs Excavating pregame show. Signs Excavating, they can assist with your general excavating services, demolition, and any of your emergency repair work. From driveways to dish cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Our first pitch is set for 5 p.m. Signs Excavating team is committed to doing the job right, on schedule, and within budget. Based in rural defiance, Signs Excavating serves all of Northwest Ohio, providing reliable and affordable excavating services for your home, business, or your industrial property. Signs Excavating team, as we said, they offer many excavating services, including stone hauling, trenching, demolition, land clearing, and drainage work. Signs Excavating is the official pregame sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Spring Sports Season. For all your excavating needs, you can get a hold of Josh, 419-769-2290. And for your heavy haul trucking needs, you can get a hold of Brad, 419-481-3738. Or you can visit them on Facebook or signsexcavating.com. Looking ahead at the tournament, the Rams, as we said, will play the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. That game will take place Wednesday at 5 o'clock. And Tenora will host the winner of that game here on Friday at 5 o'clock. Final NWOAL standings. The Patrick Henry Patriots and the Archibald Blue Streaks tied at 6-1 and one atop the league. Liberty Center came in at 5-2. and two. Evergreen, Swanton, and Bryan were all 3-4. and four. Wauseon was 2-5 and five and Delta was 0-7. and seven. Entering the contest today, the Rams team ERA is 1.83 on the mound. Actually went up two points when they allowed two runs on Saturday. At the plate, Tenora hits at 321. Rams average seven runs a game and they give up three and a half on the mound. Rams hitting attacks led by Dalton Wolfram. Dalton comes in with a 414 average, 22 runs batted in, and 18 stolen bases. Right behind him, Caden Radzik, 370 for Caden. 22 runs batted in and 19 steals for Caden to lead the Rams. Rams staff is anchored by Corbin Castile. Corbin's 5-2 and two and has pitched very fantastic in the last month. Has an ERA of 1.54. Two straight shutouts to his credit over the state-ranked Patrick Henry Patriots. And then on Friday night versus Bryan. 
Adams have won 10 straight and 10 of their last 11. Last defeat the Rams suffered was at Kaleida on a Saturday afternoon. That was on April 29th. A tight loss there, 3-2. Looking at the Panthers, last season Delta did not win a game. They were 0-22 and obviously did not win a conference game. They were 0-7 in the NWOAL. 2023 Panther, Panthers are 4-18 this season and did not win a game. They were finished 0-7 in conference play. Leading the way on the hill, Brady Moore and Brady Wall. They each have two wins each. We'll see Brady Wall pitch here today at the plate. Bryce Gillen has 22 steals for Delta. He hits 290, 17 runs scored. And Joel Arroyo Sierra has seven runs batted in. Brady Moore hitting 271 for Delta. Delta is coached by Jay LaFever. 20 seasons for Jay, 308 wins, 221 losses. This is by Kevin Freeman and Kent Wickler, or Winkler. Uh, their bo uh, bat boy is Peyton Winkler. JV coach is Dustin Stickley, assisted by Gabe Freeman and Jerome Lohman. Trainer is Sarah Reinhard. Superintendent at... Delta is Dr. Ted Hazelman. Principal is Doug Ford. Athletic director, first year for Walt Steele. Delta's colors are spring green and white. They are from the NWOAL and they are Division Three. Looking at their enrollment, 155 boys and 132 girls. Rams are coached by head coach Brett Rollett. 23 seasons here at Sonora. Coach BR actually started his coaching career at Delta. But at Tenora, 406 wins, 178 losses. Overall, including those years at Delta, 453 career wins, 203 losses. 400 career wins number was picked up here on May 1st, 2011. His Tenora 400th career win was on the 4th. We'll turn it over to Bridget for Senior Day here at Tenora. And an 18-3 GMC record and two GMC championships and a COVID year. All six seniors have been a part of the Tenora baseball program for all four years. Go Jimmy! They also were part of the first group to lead the Rams to the State Acne State Championship game in 2021. We would also like to thank their parents for their continued support towards the baseball program for the past four years. The coaching staff and the student athletes appreciate everything they have done for the baseball program. First up, number one, Luke Harris. Luke is the son of Jim and Joni Harris. He also has a sister, Sarah, who everyone knows and loves. Luke has played right field, shortstop, and second base this season, and is one of the team's best hitters. Luke plans on attending the University of Toledo and majoring in business. He is walking on to the Toledo basketball team next season. Luke has lettered in basketball and baseball. His favorite moment of high school sports was winning a basketball tournament game this season and playing in the state final acne game in 2021. Luke Harris. Next up is number two, Eli Plasman. Eli's parents are Doug and Marie Plasman. Eli has three siblings, Molly, who is pregnant and due on July 6th, Ty, and Julia. Eli has played second base and has been one of the top pitchers this season. Eli has lettered in basketball and baseball the past two years. Eli's two biggest moments in athletics so far have been watching the 2014 State Baseball Championship season and playing for his dad and advancing in pitching in the Acne State Championship game. Eli is uncertain at this time what he will be doing in the future, but whatever he decides, we know he will be successful. Number two, Eli Klausman. Number four is Taryn Ward. Taryn is the son of Justin Ward. Taryn has played third base and also pitched this season. Taryn plans on attending Northwest State next year and majoring in marketing. Taryn has three siblings, Josiah, Eliana, and Riley. Taryn has lettered twice in baseball and football. He lists winning state football championship in sixth grade and playing in the Acme Championship game as his most memorable Pretty events good. in athletics. Taryn Ward. Next up, number nine, Trent Lincoln. Trent is the son of Tim and Molly Lincoln. 
Trent is the second baseball player in the Lincoln family. His brother Ty was a catcher for the Tenora baseball program last season. Trent's favorite athletic memories are winning the freshman GMC basketball championship and playing in the Acme State Championship game. Trent will be going to Trine University next year and majoring in civil engineering. Trent Lincoln. Next up, number 15, Dalton Wolfram. Yay! Dalton is the son of Scott and Becky Wolfram. He has one brother, David. Dalton has played outfield and has been the number one catcher this season. Dalton has lettered in baseball and wrestling at Tenora. Dalton has had a tremendous career at Tenora in the sport of wrestling. He has placed at state twice, finishing fifth this season. He has also set many records at Tenora on the mats. He also enjoyed playing in the Acme Championship game. At this time, he is undecided of his future, but with his work ethic, he will achieve great things. Dalton Wolfram. Next is number 22, Corbin Castile. Corbin is the son of Mike and Jen Brubaker. Corbin has two brothers, Evan and Bryce. Corbin has been a steady influence on the mound this season. He has become one of the team's top pitchers. Corbin attends Four County and takes carpentry. He will go into the workforce after high school. His favorite athletic memories in high school was hitting his first home run in 2017 and playing in the Acme State Championship game. Corbin Castile. Thank you, seniors and senior parents. Also, we would like to thank Mr. Craig Rutter for his years of service as the athletic director at Tenora and the support you have given the baseball program over the years. Enjoy your retirement and go Rams! Thank you very much, Mr. Rutter. We appreciate you. Next, can we please have the group family centered around home plate? Fantastic senior day here, as always. If you miss today, you still want to come out. Like I said, you can come out tomorrow. The boys will play Archibald. Then Saturday, boys will be here versus the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. A little bit out of breath. Went down, took some pictures, and raced up the stairs. <laughs> probably, probably should have took about a 30 more second break before I start talking. <laughs> Uh -huh. But the senior class, fantastic season, 18 and 4. I mean, who would have thought? Luke Harris, Corbin Castile, Ty Wimp, Kenny Light Plasma, Dalton Warfram, and Taryn Ward. We'll continue with our pregame. Rams said BR's in his 23rd season here, 406 wins at 478 losses. Overall, 250, or 453 and 203. He's assisted by Chuck Carey, Reed Anders, and Eric Tipton. He has four final four appearances and one state title. That was in 2014. Ten GMC titles overall. 2009, 10, 11, 12, 13, 17, 18, 19, 21, and 22. In addition to our senior night this evening, we would also like to thank a special guest of the Tenora Baseball Program. We would like to thank Mr. Steve Groove and his wife Kelly and the entire Groove family for the generosity to the baseball program. The turf infield was put in last summer with the financial support of Steve and the entire Groove family. We are honored to play on the newly named Groove Field. Again, thank you Steve and Kelly for your continued support of the Tenora Baseball Program. Yes, thank you, Drew family, for this fantastic facility here at Tenor High School. The infield is second to none around the area. So, back here, 
to the Science Ask of Any pregame show. But yes, thank you to the Groove family and uh, the six senior member class. We'll get more into the seniors a little bit later. But uh, thank you to the Steve Groove family. Actually, the last senior day we had here versus Delta with 2021 were Marcus and Max. Actually, that was their senior class. Um... But the superintendent here at Northeastern Local Schools is Nicole Wells. The principal is Alex Nafsiger. Athletic director, as Bridget said, Mr. Craig Rudder. Seeing his days wind down here. He said he's not going to be a stranger. He's still going to be around. As you can, the guys can tell, listen to Coach Rudder down below. Um, yeah, be sad when he's not around. So, A trainer at Tenora is Emily Volmar. Colors are hunter green and white. Rams are Division Three, 147 boys, 127 girls. So wherever you are, however you may be listening or watching, thanks for tuning in to tonight's game. Coming up live here from Tenora High School's Groob Field, it's the Tenora Rams taking on the Delta Panthers in a non-league matchup here in boys baseball. Studio, as always, brought to you by Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. In-game scoreboard, brought to you by Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker. Actually had that for supper last night. Can, you can never go wrong with Drop Zone Pizza. Pre-game, signs excavating, video sponsor, Batten Stevens in Jewel, Ohio. Stats, brought to you by Mr. Jim Gares and BSN Sports. Post-game, brought to you by Mr. Tim Bidlack at Bidlack Insurance and Investments. Your player of the game in a Rams victory, brought to you by Connie Higby at Higby Embroidery. Uniforms, Rams in the Hunter Green tops with the white lettering and black trim. Delta in the black pinstripes with the hunter green lettering and white trim or david frank weather sunny here at sonora high school 74 degrees and within the last 10 days here we've had beautiful weather a couple raindrops on saturday but sun popped out at the end try to get the lineups in here as the rams get well i guess we'll have the uh playing of our national anthem we'll try and squeeze in the national lineups and thank you ray always watching from kentucky appreciate you tuning in ray as always so we'll tune thing turn things over here to bridget and we'll get things ready for the playing of our national anthem of our national anthem we'll go through the visitors from delta bryce gillen leading off in he'll be playing at shortstop batting second is braden roofer he'll be at first base batting third in center field is joel arroyo sierra batting fourth at cleanup at second base is brady moore batting fifth at third base is landon greisinger your DH, batting six, is Luke Schlatter. He's hitting for the catcher, Will Brown. Batting seventh, and on the mound is Brody Wall. Batting eighth, Caleb Lance. Lance will be in left field, and Brandon Pribe, the number nine hitter, Pribe will be hitting in the, or playing in the right field. For the Rams, senior day here. A little lineup shakeup, as you can always expect on senior day. On the mound is Connor Wolfram. First varsity start for Connor. 
Hunter Bossman behind the plate. Trent Wimpkin at first. Eli Plasma at second. Caden Radzik at short. Taryn Ward at third. Outfield, Corbin Castile will get the start on senior day in left. Dalton Wolfram getting the start in center field here on senior day. And Luke Harris, the final senior, gets the start in right field for Tenora. 72 beautiful degrees here on this on this Monday. Kind of forget what data sometimes. I think the Rams have a game like every day here for the past week, which, hey, I'm not complaining, especially when the weather's been fantastic. We'll be back here tomorrow. Archibald will be here. The Blue Streaks of Archibald finished atop the NWOL with Patrick Henry with a 6 1 tie. Top the league. Archibald overall is 15 and 7. So we'll see the Blue Streaks and Coach Selgo tomorrow. Coach Selgo been over at Archibald for as many years as BR has been here at Tenora. And the coach at Delta, Jay Lefevre, has been over there for 20 years. Actually, if the math really doesn't add up, it's about two or three years short, but he took over pretty much just after BR left Delta. Leading off for Delta, number 11, the shortstop, Bryce Gillen. So for Connor Wolfram, no stats at the varsity level. Pitched a few games at the JV and pitched last year in the Acme League. Bryce Gillen leading off 290 for Bryce, four RBIs. He has 23 stolen bases, so he's one of those you want to keep off the base paths. First pitch. A ball. 503 first start here at Sonora High School. And it's 72 degrees. Wolfram pitches from the stretch. Come set. 1-0 pitches. Foul back to Bryce Gillen. Count is one ball and one strike. <laughs> and that's that the person with that's always yapping in the background down below there, Ned, that's actually Connor's grandfather. <laughs> one ball, one strike to Bryce Gillen. Wolfram's pitch is low and outside. Two balls and one strike. I don't think he's a Just, just, uh, always have to make fun of Ned. The Yankee cap on. Of course, when I walked by, I had to flip it off of him. 2-1 pitch. Foul, or not foul, I guess it's not. It's hit fair. Wimpkin scoops it up. Wolfram comes over to cover. Bryce Gillen is retired. 3-1 on the put out. A line shot down the first base side. I thought it was going to go foul. And actually, Wimpkin went over there, scooped it up. About half a foot inside fair territory. Knocked it down, threw it to Connor Wolfram, covering the base for out number one. Braden Roofer steps in. First pitch to Roofer, ground ball shortstop. Razzik up with it, throws over in time to retire Roofer, who was hitting 256. Didn't even get a chance to give you his stats. First pitch swinging. Joel Arroyo Sierra steps in. The center fielder, Joel Arroyo Sierra. So Sierra, 217 on the season with seven runs batted in. First pitch, breaking ball stays inside. One ball and no strikes. One zero pitch, strike called. One ball, one strike, two outs here in the top of the first inning just underway here at Tenora High School. No score. Senior day here at Tenora. Rams honoring the six seniors as well as the group family before the game. 1-1 one, one pitch, strike called on the inside corner. Wolf from a junior will be counted on next season. Kind of the same position that Corbin Castile was in last year. Corbin didn't really see a lot of time on the mound at the varsity level. Worked in the offseason. 1-2 pitch coming to Arroyo Sierra. Low. And the offseason work definitely has paid off for Corbin Castillo. So Castillo, 5-2 and two for the Rams. Wolfram comes set, 2-2 two, two pitches, low, three balls and two strikes. 
Mario Castillo batting in third, playing in center field. <laughs> he struck out. Castillo, Wolfram comes set, payoff pitch. A little tapper over the head of Wolfram, picks it up, fires over to first base in time to retire. Roy is here for the third out. Nice play by Connor, 1 3 on the put out in the inning for Delta. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, nobody left on. Bottom of the first inning coming up here at Drew Field at Sonora High School. No score after a half inning of play. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Back here at Sonora High School. Bottom of the first inning. Just underway here on Senior Day. Rams coming at 18 and 4. Came as the 18th ranked team in the state in the most recent coaches poll. Delta 4 and 18. Overall, looking at the Rams, Connor Wolfram will lead it off. Connor's on the mound, and Caden Radzik play at shortstop. Dalton Wolfram will be the third batter. He'll be playing in center field. Defensively for Delta, Brady Wall will be on the mound. He's 2-4, and four, 31 innings pitched. He's pitched in nine games, started six. ERA of 6.32, 31 hits, 32 runs allowed, 28 earned runs. Walked 21, and he struck out 37. Will Brown will be behind the plate. Braden Roofer at first base. Brady Moore at second. Shortstop is Bryce Gillen. Third base is Landon Greisinger. Outfield, left field is Caleb Lance. Center field is Joel Arroyo Sierra. And in right field is Brandon Pribe for the visiting Delta Panthers. Brody Wall. Left-hander is going to tow the rubber for Coach Lefevre. Group family stopped up. A fantastic Connor Wolfram. donation again by Steve Group and the Group family to make this one of the better baseball facilities in the area. Right, second to Defiance. Connor Wolfram is going to lead it off. 278 on the season for Connor. He's got five runs batted in limited plate appearances. Connor mostly uses a pinch runner this season. First pitch outside. Misses the corner. So Brody Wall, the junior lefty on the mound in his black pinstripe uniform. Pitch to Connor's a strike. Count evens at a ball and a strike. Balls 1-1 one, one to Connor Wolfram outside. Yeah, Two balls and one strike. As we said, the last time that there was senior day here versus Delta was 2021. Rams with an 11-1 victory. 2-1 pitch away. Jacob Bailey hit a walk-off single in the bottom of the fifth for the 10-run rule in the 11-1 victory. In 2021. 3 1 pitch to Wolfram. Outside ball four. So Connor Wolfram works the leadoff walk. Number 11, Caden. Caden Radzik steps in. Caden 363, 22 runs batted in and 19 steals. Caden had four stolen bases on Saturday here versus Miller City. Again, that 21 graduating class was, I always like to go back and look at all the senior classes and just to pop back in some names you kind of forget about over the years. It was just two short years ago, and it seems like just yesterday. Wolfram with the lead. Wall's pitch is high. That was Ben Mendez, Zach Spy, who actually saw Zach at the store yesterday. He's back home from school. Talked to him for a while. Says his brother got through out of the JV game. <laughs> so... 
on Saturday. <laughs> Adam got thrown out somehow, <laughs> Zach said. Pitches a strike to Caden. One ball and one strike. Also, Andrew Emthern, Marcus and Max Group, Kate Vogelsong, and Jacob Bailey were seniors in 2021. 1-1 one, one pitch to Radzik. Swung on. Fouled off over the right side. Kate Vogelsong got the win on senior day 2021. Pitch five strong innings for the Rams. Last year on senior day, the Rams played Antwerp here in a non-league game. Tune-up. Kind of a like next door. We'll get into that here in a little bit. 1-2 pitch from Walter Razek. There goes Connor Wolfram. Pitch hit right at the second baseman. Up with it is Moore over to get Razek, but down to second base goes Wolfram, who I think had the base stolen. Razek is out number one. Three, or er, four, three on the put out. Dalton Wolfram, 4-14 on the season for Dalton. He has 22 runs batted in and 18 stolen bases. Connor Wolfram at second. <laughs> Leads away. Pitch coming to Dalton. High and away. Ball one. Next door, Lady Rams. The extreme tournament tune-up over there for Coach Fairchild. Hosting Brian. Brian's 19-1. and one. They have one loss on the season. I believe that was to Perrysburg. Yeah. Right. Interesting to track that game next door. 1-0 yeah. pitch. Wolfram fouls it off for the first base dugout. One ball and one strike. So Coach Fairchild... They were playing tournament. I want to schedule the best teams we can leading up to that game on Friday or Wednesday. Never, never. Lady Rams will play Wednesday versus Oak Harbor at 4 o'clock. That was his ball all the way. 1 1 pitch from Wall to Dalton Wolfram as Connor leads from second. Outside, ball two. That's terrible. And a matchup of probably the two best pitchers in Northwest Ohio outside of the Recisa girl from Fairview. Paige Recisa. 2-1 pitch to Dalton Wolfram inside. I don't know how it missed him. Somehow it did. 3-1 and one to Dalton Wolfram. Dalton said he, in senior day he's undecided in what he wants to do. I hear his father has a really nice mechanic shop. <laughs> On Spruce Street if anybody's interested. <laughs> I actually took my daughter's car there a couple weeks ago. 3-1 pitch. Swung on. Fouled first base side. Giving chase as the catcher, Will Brown. And it falls right in between Brown and the first baseman, Braden Roofer, harmlessly. So Wolfram gets a second life. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes to Dalton. Nobody got it. Nobody. Even the guys in the dugout thought. So Will Brown, nice effort over there by Will. Trying to make a little sliding catch as he tried to avoid Roofer coming in from first base. And neither one of them could come up with the ball. <laughs> Connor Wolfram leads from second to 3-2 pitch to Dalton Wolfram. Wall comes set. Wide shot in the center field for a base hit. Connor hits third. He's going to try and score. Throw into the infield is cut off. Dalton Wolfram picks up RBI number 23 on the season. The Rams grab a 1-0 lead on the Dalton Wolfram line shot in the center field for an RBI single. That's going to bring up Taryn Ward. Taryn, 349 with 15 runs batted in on the season. Taryn, as always, playing at third base. Brody Wall on the hill for Delta, the lefty. Takes a look over at Dalton Wolfram at first. Dalton. Got to get the stolen base lead, or at least tied back with Caden. Caden overtook him Saturday. Pitch. as a strike to Taryn Ward. Caden had the lead most of the year. Dalton's been climbing and climbing and climbing and finally caught him. Then Caden, Saturday's like, I want to get her back, my friend. Wall steps off, fakes a throw to first base. Ward steps out, looks down at Rams third base coach, Brent Renolette. Reed Anders coaching at first. How much is that? Oh, one pitch. There goes Dalton. Pitch taken by Ward. Stolen base by Wolfram. Perfect thing right there by Taron. Taron saw the huge jump by Dalton. He didn't even offer at it. Just let Dalton go down there. 
So Wolfram with stolen base number 19 ties Caden Razik for the team lead. One ball, one strike pitch to Taryn Ward from Wall. Outside, ball two. Like sometimes the Rams may not have the best talented teams in Northwest Ohio, but you're not going to see anybody more fundamentally sound than the Rams. Very smart baseball team year after year after year. Instant was right there. There goes Dalton for third. Ward smashes it right at the left fielder. Lance snags it. Wolfram has to scamper all the way back to second base. That's the second out. Ward hit it right on the head. Unfortunately, right up Caleb Lance in left field for out number two. Luke Harris. Going to step in, senior Luke Harris here on senior day. We playing in right field. 303 for Luke. 13 runs batted in. Luke said he's going to walk on to the UT basketball team. Mm -hmm. Strike called to Luke and should be very successful. Anybody that watched Luke his senior season here at Tenora. Nothing but yeah. the best wishes for Luke next fall. And winner. Walls 0 1 pitch to Luke Harris. Wolfram takes off for third. Throw down by Brown, not here and close. Wolfram with his second steal of the inning now has 20 to grab the team lead from Caden Radzik. Yeah, you're, as John said, I think he's probably stolen third base about six, seven times this year. 1 1 count to Harris. Walls pitch. Harris. Fouls it off, first base side or the dugout, out of play. One ball in, two strikes, now to Luke. Two outs, bottom of the first, no score. Rams have Dalton Wolfram at third. Connor, or yes, the Rams do lead one nothing. Connor Wolfram scored on a Dalton Wolfram RBI. Dalton is now at third base. Brody Wall gets the sign, comes set. One, two pitch coming to Luke Harris. That one's outside. Two balls and two strikes. Delta will be play Wednesday versus Ottawa Hills. I think a small America for Delta to win. They play face Ottawa Hills. Ottawa Hills, I believe, is only 10 and 9 on the season. I know. At least the last I looked, which is earlier in the week. Or last week, I should say. They probably played a couple games since then, but the last official record I saw from Ottawa Hills was 10 and 9. I know. 2 2 pitch coming to Harris. Wolfram leads from third. Harris sends a high major league pop-up into foul territory, first base side. Braden Wolf or Roofer puts it away in foul territory for out number three, retiring the Rams in the first inning, but the Rams get a run. They do so on the RBI single by Dalton Wolfram. No errors, and they leave one on base after an inning of play here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Is each Sonora Rams one. And the Delta Panthers, zero. We'll be back after this time out. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun of Defiance has been serving Northwest Ohio for over 30 years. Need cash? Collateral pawn loans are available. Stop in and see Shar and the staff at 5727 State Route 66 North in Defiance, Ohio. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun carries a full line of new and pre-owned items that include firearms, ammo, optics, game systems, knives, jewelry, and Amish Poly furniture. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun has in-house jewelry as well as a gunsmith on site. Hours of operation are Monday 10 to 7, Tuesday through Friday 10 to 5, and Saturday 9 to 3. Got questions? Give them a call 419-784-9880 or visit them online at woodenindianpawn.com or visit their Facebook page. Wooden Indian Pawn and Gun, your locally owned pawn specialists. Say go Rams. Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Bottom of inning two we go here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Four, five, and six for Delta. Moore, Greisinger, and Schlatter to face Connor Wolfram. RBI single by Dalton Wolfram scored Connor in the Rams part of, bottom part of the first inning. Next door, heck of a matchup. 19-1 Brian facing the Lady Rams. Lady Rams with a 1-0 lead after one inning of play in a tournament tune-up by Coach Fairchild and the Lady Rams. Up to the plate. A heck of a matchup over there, really. That's better than a lot of tournament games in the area in the sectionals. That over there is like a district final. Right, 
Brady Moore steps in. 271, six RBIs and seven stolen bases on the season for Moore. First pitch by Connor Wolfram was a ball. Wolfram out of the set. 1 0 pitch. Swung on, little blooper right at Plasman. Oh, he <laughs> had it. Eli turned. I don't think he, he may have slightly stumbled at the cut of the grass from the turf to the outfield. Put the glove up, had it in the glove, and it bounced out. So Brady Moore is going to reach on the, boy, that's a tough error on Plasman, but error nonetheless. So Moore is on at first. Greisinger will step in. First pitch to Greisinger. It's blocked by Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman with his first win of the season Saturday here versus Miller City. Pitch five fantastic innings for the win. Swung on, fouled first or third base side. Bosselman giving chase, hits the top of the Rams dugout. Yes, Hunter was our player of the game. Saturday for his first career varsity win. Mason McCullen came on in relief. Mason pitched very well, just couldn't keep his cap on. I don't know what was going on there, but every pitch the cap went flying. Either he got a haircut the night before or somebody stole his hat and it was too small. Pitches a strike. One ball and two strikes now to Landon Greisinger. 240 for Greisinger on the season. Got five runs batted in. Wolfram comes set. Runner leads from first. Pitch is hit. Foul. Third base side. Count stays at one ball and one strike. Luke Slaughter on deck for Delta. DHing for Will Brown. One ball, two strikes, runner at first, nobody out. Moore with the lead. Got seven stolen bases, so definitely somebody to keep an eye on. Stays put, pitches, swung on and missed. Throw down to first base, just back ahead of the throw was Brandy Moore. Or Brady Moore. Now batting number so eight down eight more strikes Luke is Landon Dreisinger for the first out. Luke Schlotter steps in. Bats from the right side of the plate. Wolfram comes set. Pitch to Schlatter. Right center field is over the head of Wolfram. That's going to go all the way to the wall. Browning second is Moore. He hits third. He's going to try and score. No throw. Delta has tied it at one on the RBI double by Luke Schlatter. Schlatter to the drive. The center field. Now batting number 19. Over the head of Dalton Wolfram a wit. That was minimal. That's only the fifth plate appearance for Schlatter. Brody Wall steps in. 179 for Wall. That's from the left side of the plate. Runner at second. One out. Wolfram's pitch outside. Ball one. So we're tied at one here in the top of the second inning. As Wall digs in. Wall 179 on the season. Pitch is blocked by Bosselman behind the plate. Seven RBIs by Wall. Well, from come set, looks back at the runner at second, Slaughter. 2-0 pitch to Wall is outside. Three balls and no strikes. Caleb Lance awaits on deck for the Panthers of Delta. Connor Wolfram looks back at the runner a second. 3-0 pitch to Wall. Just misses outside. Down to first base goes Wall. Caleb Lance steps in, the number eight hitter playing in left field. Fielder, Caleb Lance. Lance also bats from the left side. Right, 
Delta has runners at first and second. First pitch outside. About the last five pitches have all been in the same spot for Connor. Not really that. He's not missing by that much. Just needs to fine tune his mechanics just a hair. Lance 182 on the season. Pitch inside ball two. Finish, Connor. Finish. Four runs batted in for Lance on the season. Top of the second, tight at one. Delta has runners at first and second with one out. Caleb Lance at the plate, two balls and no strikes. Wolfram comes set. 2-0 pitch. Little tapper, first base side. Wolfram off the mound, throws it over to first base to Wipkin. Runners move up to second and third. Down to second goes Wall. Down to third goes Slaughter. Lance now, out 1-3 for out number two. Brendan Pryby. Pryby, the number nine hitter, steps in. 163 on the season. And he bats, uh, or bats, he plays in right field for Coach Lefevre and the Panthers. Wolfram winds up, wheels back, fakes a throw to second. First pitch. Ball, a little low and outside. one nothing, Lady Rams next door over Brian. And we'll be back here tomorrow versus Delta. Or Delta, Archibald. Another NWOAL team. 1-0 pitch. A little bit low. Two balls and no strikes. One fifty two for Pryby. 2-0 count. That's from the right side. Wolfram comes set. A junior righties, 2-0 pitch. Swung on, little blooper right field, and comes Harris. Diving catch by Luke Harris in foul territory. Harris makes the play. That would have scored two. Heck of a play on senior day by senior right fielder Luke Harris saving two runs. Wow, what a heck of a play by Luke. In the inning, Delta gets one run. And they do so with the double off the bat of Slaughter. One there by the Rams and two left on base. What a heck of a play by Luke. After an inning and a half here at Sonora High School on their drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, we are tied at one. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here, bottom of the second inning. Boy, what a play by Luke Harris to end that inning. That was a double scoring two for her privy. And Harris with a dive. I don't know if that would have been in fair or foul territory, but nonetheless, fair, fair territory, John says. That was a, just a heck of a play by Luke Harris. One of the better plays we've seen this year. For the Rams, six, seven, and eight. Hunter Bosselman, Corbin Castile, and Eli Plasman to bat against Brady Wall. Still one nothing next door, Bridget said, between Brian and Tenora. What a heck of, like I said, what a heck of a game that is. If this, if honestly, if this game wasn't going on right here, I'd be over there watching that one. Here we are tied at one as we go to the bottom of inning number two here at Groove Field. Honored the Groobs as well beforehand. Steve Groob and the boys were here and his whole family along with the girls. So appreciate the Groobs for their donation, which helped 
Up to bat, number Put the artificial surface in here at Sonora High School and the infield. Outfield is still grass. But it looks fantastic. Hunter Bosselman steps in. 270 with 13 runs batted in for Hunter. Said Hunter picked up his first win on the mound on Saturday. was our player of the game. Actually had an RBI it's double, though, if I right? recall, right as well. First pitch to Hunter is outside for a ball. Oh, 1 0 pitch from Wall to Boston when it's fouled off behind us here. Uh, 1 1 is your count. Final of the second. Nobody on, nobody out. Again. Very unusual. No wind here at Sonora High School. That's the third time in the last two weeks. Pitch is just a bit outside. Two balls at a strike to Hunter Bosselin. Ball 2-1 to Bosselman. Drilled down the right field side. Just foul. Bosselman getting ready to round first. Going to come back, grab the bat. Come back to a two balls and two strike count. Coach Renolette coaching at third base and Coach Anders down there coaching at first. <laughs> Coach Tipton in the dugout. Order over here. <laughs> I agree, Pittsburgh Sioux. We got flies, we got wasps, we got yellow jackets. We got all kinds of stuff flying around here today. <laughs> Is he? B.J. Morlock down in the bullpen for the Rams. Yes, man. Heavy on the man. 2-2 right? or 3-2 pitch to Bosselman. This one's right at the right. Oh, it's over his head. The right fielder came in. Priby's going to go chase that one. Rolls all the way to the wall. Bosselman hits second. He's going to try and for three. Here's the throw. Not in time. Bosselman in at third. That's a single. And he went to third on the air. So Bosselman picks up a single. And the error on the right fielder. Put him at third base with nobody out. We're tied at one here. Going to bring up Corbin Castile. Castile limited Plate appearance this year, looking for his first hit. Senior day here. Corbin starting in left field. First pitch to Corbin by Wall. Catches the outside corner. Strike one. Bosselman leads away at third with nobody out. Count to Castile. No balls and a strike. Castile taps a foul. Third base side. Right by the Rams on deck circle. Sue's probably trying to take her fly swatter to her TV and the fly won't move. <laughs> a 2 pitch coming to Corbin. Breaking ball stays high and away. One ball and two strikes. For us to come up here on a full-time basis two or three times a game, we kind of run for our life between the wasps, the yellow jackets, and anything else that's flying there. There was bees here a couple days ago. Like little sweat bees flying around. Castillo rockets it foul, third base side, just behind head coach Brett Renolette. Coach Peaster was here Saturday. We had 33 years of combined coaching, or for, for 36 years of combined coaching experience with Coach Lefevre here. We have 43 years. One, two pitch, Castillo. Soft fly ball, foul ball in the lands in right field. Right fielder. Right, I, don't know, I don't know what he was doing. I think he slid to avoid the fence maybe. He sat there for a couple seconds. Made sure he had all of his bolts still attached and hops back up and heads back to right field. Bottom of the second, tight at one. Go-ahead runs at third, Hunter Bosselman. 
Corbin Castillo at the plate with a one ball, two strike count. Brody Wall gets the sign, now he steps off. Will Brown is his catcher. Run through the rest of the Delta defense for those of you just popping in. One, two, pitch to Castillo, outside. Two and two. Brady Roofer at first. Brady Moore at second. Bryce Gillen at short. Landon Greisinger at third. Lance in left. Royal Sierra in center. And Preby in right. 2-2 two, two pitch to Castile. Way outside. Ball three. Count goes full to Corbin. On deck for the Rams is Eli Plasman. Three, two, pitch to Corbin. Just misses outside. He works the walk after being down 0-2. Nice patience by Corbin, who doesn't really see that many pitches. So Castillo's on at first, and Bosselman is on at third. Plasman steps in. Eli, 300 with nine runs batted in. To steal. Decent lead at first. Ball comes set. There goes Castillo. No throw by Brown. Castillo in standing up. First stolen base of the season for Corbin. Well, you don't want Corbin sliding into second, getting a sprained ankle at this point of the season. Some action next door. Somebody did something. Brian hit a home run, Bridget said. So Brian either tied or took the lead next door. Lady Rams were up 1 nothing. Twin of said Golden Bears coming in with 19 and 1. They play Friday in their tournament contest in the state playoffs. Pitches a strike to Eli. Two balls and one strike. Rams have runners at second and third in this tie game here in the. Bottom of the second here on senior day. Bosselman to third, Castile at second. 2-1 pitch to Eli. Swung on and missed. Ball gets behind the catcher. Brown takes a couple steps back and scoops it up. <laughs> but Coach Jay Lefevre, been the Delta for 20 years. There must have been a, like a coach in between BR when he left Delta. I think his first year at Snore was 99. 2-2 two -two pitch coming to Eli. Hits it shortstop side. Goes over to first base with the throw. Runs going to score. So an RBI for Eli scoring Hunter Bosselman. Down to third goes Corbin Castile. So Plasma on the fielder's choice. 6-3 on the put out. Collects an RBI. That's the second out of the inning. Gonna bring up Trent Wimpkin. Wimpkin 333 in limit to the bats. As a team, the Rams bat 321. Torres' team ERA coming in was 183. Pitch to Wimpkin is inside. Nice stop by Brown. Saved a run. Top of the order on deck. Connor Wolfram. One zero pitch to Whipkin catches the outside corner. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Walls one one shallow fly ball at the shortstop. I thought it was going to land over his head, but Gillen snags it off the bat of Whipkin for out number three. That's unassisted on a put out for the shortstop in the inning. The Rams take the lead. They get one run. They get one hit. No errors. And Rams leave one on base. Through two innings of play here at Group Field at Tenora High School. On senior day, it is Tenora 2 and Delta 1. We'll be back after this here on Tenora Rams Live. 
The Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters is a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support is shown in many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the team or the organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. Visit them on Facebook at Tenora Athletic Boosters. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at Groove Field from Tenora High School. Rams with a 2-1 lead as we head to the top of inning number three. Be the top of the lineup for Delta. One, two, and three to face Connor Wolf from Bryce Gillen, Braden Roofer, and Joel Arroyo Sierra. Next door, Delta, Delta Bryan has grabbed a 3-1 lead over the Lady Rams in a regular season tournament tune-up game. Lady Rams had a 1-0 lead and heading into that top of the third. Golden Bears have played a 3 to grab a 3-1 lead over at the Lady Rams softball complex. Here, it's 2-1. Up to the plate, number 11, Bryce Gillen. Bryce Gillen steps in. Bryce ah. grounded out to first base. Nice play by first baseman Trent Wimpkin and Connor Wolfram to retire Gillen to start the game. 290 for Gillen. Four runs batted in, 23 stolen bases. Wolfram comes set. First pitch, breaking ball, swung on, fouled first base side, giving chases ow, ow, ow. Bosselman and Wolfram and Wimpkin. And it's over the Delta first base dugout out of play. So Wolfram climbs it back top the mound. Might want to take a couple seconds breather there, but Connor, he's ready to go after jetting all the way over there to try to get the foul ball. Wolfram comes set. Junior Riders, righty's pitch outside. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Wolfram pitches from the first base side of the mound. Wolfram's 1-1. One, one. That's low. Ball two. Two balls and one strike. On another great day for baseball here at Sonora High School. There you go. 2-1 pitch. A smash foul. Right field. Harris gives chase. Does not have a chance. Full week of activities. Two games here today. Boys and girls. Tomorrow, the boys are here versus Archibald. Wednesday, we'll travel to Holland and we'll cover the girls' softball game as the number three seeded Sonora Rams take on the number one seed, Oak Harbor. 2-2 two -two pitch to Gillen. Fouled back out of play. Count stays two balls and two strikes. Then we get a day off on Thursday, I think, as long as Coach Fairchild doesn't schedule a game, which I don't think he will. And then Friday, we're back here for the sectional finals. Rams will play the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. That game takes place Wednesday at Ottawa Hills. Connor steps off. He asks for time. Gillen steps out. Ottawa Hills knocked the Rams out of the tournament last year in the district finals. Smash just outside the line at third. Bryce Gillen comes back, fetches the bat. 2-2 count to Bryce. That was a heck of a game last year. Rams actually knocked off the Archibald Blue Streaks, who was the state runner-up this season before. DJ Newman and Nolan Schaefer went. Or that was actually Connor Wolfram. Nolan pitched against Ottawa Hills in the district finals. Gillen hits it to right center. That falls in between Harris and... Wolfram, Harris up with it, fires it back to the infield, not before Gillen has a leadoff double for the Delta Panthers. Up to the plate, number two. Rams lead 2-1 to one here in the top of the third. Precarious as we speak. As Braden Roofer, the number two hitter, steps in. 256 for Roofer, four runs batted in and nine steals. Crowded to Radzik is short, his first plate appearance. Well, from on the mound for Tenora, Connor comes set. Pitch is just a bit outside. One ball and no strikes. 
give you the pitch breakdown for Connor. Seems like I reload my game changer. So my spare phone, which sometimes just resets out of the blue for no reason. 1-0 pitch. Is ball two. 37 pitches for Connor. 19 strikes through two plus innings here. Connor comes set, looks back at the runner, Gillen at second. 2 0 pitch to Roofers, a strike. Two balls and a strike to Braden Roofer. Wolfram looks back at Gillen, leads away from second. 2 1 pitch to Braden Roofers, outside, just missed. Three balls and a strike. I think if he would have had the home plate umpire we had the last couple games, the, several of these would have been strikes, I do believe. 3-1 pitch coming to Roofer. Here's the pitch. Spouled off third base side, out of play. Count stays full at 3-2. and two. Top of the third, we are tied. Rams have a 2-1 lead. Each team with run uh, two hits. Delta has a runner in second with nobody out. 3-2 pitch coming from Wolfram to Roofer. There comes Connor's pitch. Hit shortstop side. Razzik up with it. Throws the third. Ward puts the tag on Gillen. Nice play by Razzik. I don't know what Gillen was thinking. The ball is hit right in front of him. So Gillen becomes the first out at third base. Roofer down to first on the fielder's choice. Plays like that, the ball's hitting right in front of you. You have nobody out. You can't get thrown out at third base. Nice play by Razzik again, as I said. The Rams, very fundamentally sound in every aspect, offense and defense. Nice pitch. pitch hit second base side. Plasma up with it. Bobbles it. Flips to Radzik. Not in time. Another error by the Rams. Plasma has both errors. E4. That's his first two errors all year. On, so Arroyo Sierra is on at first base on the error. That's his first two errors all year. Brady Moore is going to step in. Moore reached on uh, Plasma's error last. There is his first at bat. I'm trying to look to see how many errors Eli had on the season. He doesn't have many. So Delta with runners at first and second with one out. Brady Moore to the plate. First pitch to him as a strike. He scored the Delta run in the second. Eli with just two errors coming into the game and now has doubled that with two here today. Oh, one pitch to Moore. Low, nice stop by Bosselman. One ball, one strike, one out. Tied at, or no, we're not tied at two. Two runners on for Delta. Runners at first and second. They lead away. Brady Moore, 274 at the plate with a one ball, one strike count. Connor looks back at the runner a second. He comes set. Here's the pitch. Nice pitch. Oh, just missed the outside corner. Wow. Two balls and one strike. Too much of a strike there, kid. Greisinger on deck for the Panthers. 2-1 pitch from Warfram to Moore. Fouled off third base side. Count goes two balls and two strikes. I don't believe there's any rain in the forecast this week, so chance of showers, I believe, on Friday. <clears throat> but we had a chance of showers last week almost every day, and I don't think we just got a couple drops here or there. Runners lead from first and second. 2-2 two, two pitch coming to Moore from... Whoa! Wolfram hits him right in the back, so that's going to load him up. Look at Doug. You're fine, Seven. You're fine. So Moore loads him up. As he was hit in the back, he goes down to first. Arroyo Sierra goes down to second. And Roofer is on a third. And had Gillen not been thrown out trying to get to third, he would have a tie game by now. So Panthers on every base with one out here at the top of the third. Rams lead two to one. 
Dosselman goes out to talk to Wolfram. B.J. Morlock was throwing last inning, so he's ready to go on this. Not really a hot day here at Sonora, but it's warm. All right, Seb. Uh, B.J. should be ready to go. You're good. Relax up there. Sunny 72 degrees here at Groom Field. Wolfram comes set. Greisinger struck out the first plate appearance. Breaking ball nice tapped pitch. into the Rams' dugout at third base side. Landon Greisinger, 240 on the season, has five runs batted in. He's playing at third base for Coach Lefevre and the Panthers. Bases full of Delta Panthers, one out. 0-1 pitch to Greisinger. Hit right back to Wolfram. He comes home for the force out. Back to first base. Double play. One, two, three for the twin killing. The very unconventional one, two, three put out. And that kills the rally for the Panthers here in the third. A pitcher's best friend. The good old one, two, three double play. In the inning for Delta, no runs. They get one hit. Another Ram error, and Delta leaves them loaded after two and a half here at Groove Field at Sonora High School on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Sonora Rams one, and the Delta, or Sonora Rams two, and Delta one. Looking for an opportunity where you can grow your career, be appreciated, and be an owner where you work? Did we say owner? Yes! Mech is an employee-owned company that is highly motivated and actively supports the communities in which our facilities are located. Mayville Engineering needs you. Mech is an employee-owned business where our focus is on our customers' success. Mech has been named the nation's number one fabricator for 12 consecutive years in a survey published by the Fabricator magazine. Join the Mech family today. Full and part-time positions are available. $1,000 sign-on bonus, 401k, vacation and holiday pay, gain-sharing program, employee stock ownership, medical, dental, and vision insurance, short-term and long-term disability, and shift premiums for second and third shift. Visit our website, mechinc.com. Click on careers or visit the 21 Seneca Street lobby at the Defiance location. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back here at Groove Field at Tenora High School. Bottom of the third we go. It's 2-1 to one Tenora for the Rams. Top of the lineup, Connor Wolfram. Caden Radzik, and then Dalton Wolfram here on Senior Day as the Rams honor their six seniors. Luke Harris, Corbin Castile, Ty Wimpkin, Eli Plasman, Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward. But don't fear if you feel like you've missed seeing the boys play this year. You can still have two more chances. You can come out tomorrow where the Rams will host a very good Archibald Blue Streak team. Archibald. Their co-champs with Patrick Henry atop the NWOAL. They finished at 15-7. and seven. And then Friday, the more important game, Rams will play the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. That game is on Wednesday. But Friday, the Rams will host that sectional semifinal here Friday at 5 p.m. First pitch to Connor. Misses outside. Wall on the mound for Delta. He's pitched two innings, allowed two hits, two runs, both two runs, both those were earned. Has not struck anybody out and has walked two. 46 pitches and 24 strikes. 1-0 pitch to Connor is a strike, even as a count at one and one. One one pitch. High fly ball, deep center field. Royal Sierra going back, still going back, reaches up and puts it away. A few steps in front of the fence. Connor Wolfram gave it a ride. Royal Sierra tracked it down deep center field. F8 on the putout for the first out. Caden Radzik steps in. Caden grounded out to second base his first time up. 363 for Caden, 22 runs batted in. 19 runs, or 19 steals. Pitch to Caden, hits him right in the back. So Caden, down the first base he goes. We said last year, and we say it again this year, 
It's like that business community. I think that's the seventh time that Caden has been hit. And Caden has led the team in hit by pitches last year and then again this year. Probably not the category offensively you want to lead the team in. Dalton Wolfram to the plate. First pitch to Dalton is low. Ball one. Dalton with an RBI single in the first and stole two bases in the process. Was left stranded at third. 2-1, Rams lead by one here on senior day. There goes Radzik. Pitches low and inside, no throw. So Radzik with a stolen base picks up stolen base 20, Ty and Dalton. Each has 20 steals on the season. For a team, the Rams now have 80, 81. Two, three more steals today, so Tenora, just two short weeks ago, if that, I think the Rams had 47, if I recall. So they've been on fire, heating up on the base paths here lately. Pitches fouled off the bat of Wolfram to the third base side. Two balls and one strike to Dalton. One out. Caden Radzik at second. With the Rams leading two to one here in the bottom of inning number three. Karen Ward on deck for Tenora. There goes Radzik for third. Pitch. High and away. Throw sails way into left field. Radzik gets up. And Coach Reynolds going to hold him there. So Caden with a stolen base here. Now Caden retakes the team lead with 21. Dalton's like, I got to get on so I can swipe a couple bags here and get my stolen base lead back. Three balls and one strike to Wolfram, which if he gets on, he'll automatically just take off for second on the first pitch, is my guess. Walls 3-1 to Dalton. Fouled at the plate. Off the catcher shin guard to the first base side it goes. Bat Boy picks it up. And that would be to actually have the name of that little boy over there. It's Dustin Stickley. No, that's not him. Peyton Winkler is the bat boy for Delta. Wolfram smashes it into right field for a base hit. RBI single, back-to-back -back RBI singles for Dalton Wolfram. So Delta, or Delta, the Rams take a 3-1 lead. Yeah, scoring on the play was Caden Radzik. Taryn Ward digs in. Taryn, 0 for 1. Wolfram takes off. No, oh, they had him picked off. Throw down. And they get him. Dalton tried to avoid the tag, but Dalton was caught stealing at second. Second out. That was my mom and dad. Coach BR takes off the sunglasses, wipes the brow. O2 pair. First pitch to Terran is fouled into the glove. Strike one. Sometimes when you walk off the field, you don't know if that's frustration for VR or if he was just hot. <laughs> we'll give Dalton the benefit of the doubt on that one. I think VR was just warm. <laughs> nah, I'm pretty sure he wasn't. <laughs> Ward smashes a foul. First base side. First baseman given chase. Puts it away. Ray Roofer underneath it retires Ward in foul territory and the Rams in the inning for Tenora. They get another run. They grab a 3-1 lead and they do so on one hit. No errors and nobody left on base. After three innings of play here on Senior Day, Tenora 3 and Delta 1 here on the Drop Zone Pizzeria Scoreboard. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance has been providing seamless and transparent real estate closings in Northwest Ohio for 27 years. From contract to closing, their experienced team of attorneys and title agents work with lenders, businesses, and individuals to meet their real estate needs. Call the office at 419-782-3334 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or visit them online at maumeetitle.com. Maumee Valley Title Agency of Defiance wishes all the Tenora Rams athletes the best this season. 
Northwest Ohio Sports is the place for sports rankings, news, scores, podcasts, and more for area athletics. Check them out at Northwest Ohio Sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Groove Field, top of the fourth inning we go for the Panthers. Six, seven, and eight. Oh, Schlatter. Brody Wall and Caleb Lance to face Connor Wolfram. Comes right out there. What we were talking about passes and uh, Rams with a single run in the first three innings for their three. Delta with a single run in the second. Had a golden opportunity last inning to score. Had the bases loaded <laughs> with one out and a conventional one, two, three double play into the inning. Round ball right back to Wolfram. He threw to Hunter Bosselman for the force. Bosselman threw down the first base to retire the side. Actually, the key play that inning was Bryce Gillen got thrown out at third base with nobody out. Trying to advance on a ground ball that was right in front of him. Nice pitch. Schlatter steps in. First pitch to Schlatter. Finally is a strike. He drilled a double. An RBI Sorry. double <laughs> over the head of Dalton Wolfram in the second inning. Nice pitch. A DH for catcher Will Brown. Pitch is swung on and missed. Connor Wolfram quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. Wolfram's 0-2. Just misses inside. Good miss. One ball and two strikes. No such thing as a to the number six hitter leading off the fourth inning for Delta, Luke Schlatter. Schlatter's digs in. Pitches outside. Two balls and two strikes now. Fifty pitches for Connor, twenty-seven strikes. Pitch just misses him inside. Count goes full. Three balls and two strikes. John says that BJ's warming up in the bullpen again for the second time. So Morlock down in the Rams bullpen on the third base side. Come on, Connor. Payoff pitch to Schlatter. Swung on and missed. Down goes Schlatter. Wolfram blew it by him for the first out. For Connor, that's his second strikeout. Brody Wall steps in. Wall walked in the second. 179 for Wall on the season with seven runs batted in. For Connor, two and a third innings pitch. He's allowed one run. That was unearned. He's walked one, and he has struck out two. Nice pitch. First pitch to Wall. Strike call. Swung on and missed. Strike two. Wolfram quickly ahead of Wall. Oh, no balls and two strikes. The run against Wolfram is unearned. Two Ram errors here today. Pitch is outside. One ball and two strikes. To the number seven hitter, the catch or the pitcher, Brody Wall. Connor Wolfram comes set. One, two pitches, just a bit low. Count evens at two balls and two strikes. Like the two weeks, we've just been go, 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 go. Oh, Connor. Then after this week, everything kind of slows to a halt as far as baseball and softball action. Fouled off third base side. And uh, he just, he's just like, we all know we've been around it forever. Just go, go, go. Then all of a sudden one day, it's like you have nothing to do. <laughs> I mean, it's so sad. <laughs> two, two pitch. Yes, draw. He did it. Strike three call. Wall call looking for the second out. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Connor Wolfram. We're going to bring up number eight here, Caleb Lance. Lance grounded out to Wolfram his first plate appearance. Lance, the number eight hitter, playing in left field. Pitch is high and away. Come on, kid. Ball one. And after last year, last year's team you get so close to, like each year is like these aren't your kids, but they become your kids. So they're like all these kids are like your adopted kids. You're around them, you know, day after day after day. 
as the pitch is low, then all of a sudden, like right. you, you pull Bring the plug up, and they go away to college just per se, and you don't see them basically till the next school year, most of them. I mean, Acme starts, but some of the kids play Acme, some don't. Seniors obviously are done, but 2-0 pitch coming to Lance from Wolfram. That catches the outside corner. I think I talked to Bridget last year, maybe at one point in time after the season, and, and she says, I think Bridget said to BR, I don't know how you do this year after year after year because you say goodbye to all these kids. This is so hard. <laughs> Two one pitch coming. Just misses inside. Count goes to three balls and one strike. Just barely missed it. Well, from not, he's not been wild at all today. He's been around the strike zone. Very effective outing by Connor. That, of course, I say that. That one goes high and away, ball four. The announcer's jinx on that one. Sorry, Connor. So down to first base goes Caleb Lance with a walk. Just a second walk by Wolfram. Going to bring up the number nine hitter, Brandon Priby. Priby in right field, 152 average. Flew out. To, he had a heck of a catch out there by Luke Harris, actually. It wasn't a fly out. It's counted as a fly out, but it was more like a Superman catch by Luke Harris. Pitches a strike. Ball gets away from Bosselman, not far enough to allow the runner to advance. But Luke Harris Still took off on his horse and just launched his body. One of the Sports Center highlight catches. Like we see Grady make every now and then. Wolfram comes set. His 0-1 pitch to Priby inside just misses the elbow. One ball and one strike. Two outs. Top of the four. 3-1 Rams here on Senior Day. Honor the Groobs. Honor the seniors. And we still have two more home games. Doesn't get any better than that. Wolfram. 1-1 pitch. There goes the runner. Bosselman's throw down to second. Radzik slaps a tag on him. Whoa! They call him safe. I guess that was Plasman. Slapped a tag on him. Two balls and a strike to the batter. So a stolen base by Lance. He's down at second now with two outs. And the Panthers trailing by two here in the fourth. Wolfram's pitch just a up, bit man. low. Three and one. Three-one pitch from Wolfram to Priby. Swung on, fouled off, first base side over the dugout, out of play. In the Division Two sectional, Defiance with a nine-one lead over Wasion. That's in the third inning. Defiance, the number five team in Division Two. Payoff pitch from Wolfram to Priby. Check swing, strike three. Wolfram strikes out the side. In the inning for the Delta Panthers. They get a runner as far as second. Can't get him any further. No runs for Delta. No hits, no ram errors, and one more left on base. The Panthers have stranded six runners through four. To the bottom of the fourth we go on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. It is Tenora three and Delta one. We'll be back right after this time out here on Tenora Rams Live. The Fired Stone Tavern in Defiance is anything but basic. In 2021, the Fired Stone Tavern was voted to have the best pizza in the area. Now, in 2022, they've been voted as the best burgers around. Firestone Tavern is the area's go-to for wood-fired pizza, amazing appetizers, and so much more. Chef Aaron and his staff are here to serve nothing but the best. No plans after the big game? Stop out for ice-cold drinks and all the games on TV you can ask for. Our back room and patio are available for events like birthdays, corporate lunches, parties, and much, much more during the week with a 25-person minimum. Located at 211 Carpenter Road at the Eagle Rock Golf Course. The hours of operation are Monday through Friday, 2 p.m. to 11 p.m. And Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 11 p.m. Give the Firestone Tavern a call, 419-785-4015, or order online at firestonetavern.com. 
Firestone Tavern, which is the best to all the Tenora teams. Back at Tenora, it's 3-1 as we head to the fourth. Speaking of Firestone Tavern and that commercial, do yourself a favor. Take your wife or your husband or your kids or your family out there some weekend and sit on that patio. On a nice day, of course. You don't want to sit out there. And, well, you could sit out there and watch it rain if you wanted. Might get a little wet, a little misty, but... Take the family on a Friday or Saturday or even a Sunday out to Firestone Tavern. Check out that back patio. And have yourself a nice pizza or a burger and some cold beverages, whatever you want to do. But spend an hour, hour and a half out there. Firestone Tavern. Just don't... Well, you actually can't turn by Circle K. But you got to go the back way since that road's been closed, what it seems like, for about a year now. I don't know what the heck they're doing, but... You have to go in the back way to Firestone Tavern. Back by UPS. And come back in that way. Back by Rutter, Craig Rudder Field, actually. At Defiance College. First pitch to Luke Harris is a strike. Harris 303. Popped out to the first baseman in the first. Walls pitch to Harris. Strike two called on the outside corner. All of a sudden, the strike zone is widened here. Walls, 60 pitches, 32 strikes. He's allowed three hits, three runs, all earned. Has not struck anybody out and has walked two. That pitch is way outside. Bill Brown snags it with his left hand. One, two, pitch. Inside. Count evens to Luke. Two balls and two strikes. So yes, we'll visit one of our fantastic sponsors this summer and, and the uh, Firestone Tavern definitely at the top of the list. Oklahoma Tavern as well. If you want some wings, you head out to Oklahoma Tavern. Harris on top of the foot. So Luke going to take his base down to first base. He goes. He was hit by the pitch. Hunter Bosselman. <laughs> Bosselman singled in the first. Went to third on the air by the right fielder and scored the Rams' second run. Or third run, actually. The Rams' third run. No, that's second run. Yes. Sometimes I can't read my own scorebook. Harris leads away from first. Wall comes set. First pitch to Bosselman. Strike called. Bosselman 270 on the year. Fantastic outing here Saturday versus Miller City. Picked up first win this season. Got an RBI and a double in that contest. It was the Higby Embroidery player of the game. Pitch to Bosselman. Strike call on the inside corner. There goes Harris, 1-1 one, one pitch. That one's high and away. I guess it's two balls in a strike. Maybe I missed a pitch there somehow. Two and one's the count. So Harris with the stolen base is in there a second. 2-1 is the count, so John is right. Still no one, still no win. Still no wind here at Sonora High School on this Monday. Pitch way outside. Three balls and a strike to Hunter. Corbin Castile on deck for Tenora. Ball comes set. Here comes the pitch. High and away. Ball four. Down the first base goes Hunter Bosselman. Did you see her? on the base on balls. Corbin Castile. So Corbin Castile is going to step in. Corbin walked and stole a base in the second inning. Corbin is still looking for his first hit this season. Scored a run. First pitch to Corbin as a strike called. Nobody pitching better than Corbin Castillo. Back-to-back -back shutouts versus Patrick Henry and Bryan. Even the start before that versus Kaleida was pitched very well. Squares around the bunt. Misses it. Bobbled at the plate. Runners stay at first and second. Yeah, 
Yeah, I think he bunted through it. So, yeah, so well, no balls and two strikes to Corbin. 3-1 Rams here at the bottom of the fourth on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Pitcher's been bending down since he made his last pitch. I don't know if he strained. No, he lets out a big breath of air. I don't know if he felt a little tightness in his back or what. Brody Wall on the mound. This is 0-2 pitch to Castillo. Outside, just misses. One ball and two strikes to the Rams left fielder, Corbin Castillo. Wall looks at the runner at second, Luke Harris. Comes set, pitch to Corbin. High and away, two balls and two strikes. Last at bat, Corbin was down, no balls and two strikes and worked to walk. But Corbin retired 19 Golden Bears on Friday night here. Did not allow a runner since the second batter in the first inning. One of the more dominant performances in years. 2-2 two -two pitch, high ball three. Coach Lefevre got some activity down there in the bullpen for the Panthers. Wall is 3-2. Castillo, high fly ball to left center field. Center fielder Arroyo Sierra calls it, and he puts it away. Retiring Corbin for the first out here in the fourth. Eli Plasman steps in. Eli had a RBI on the fielder's choice in the second inning. Eli, 300 on the season, now with 10 runs batted in. Brady Gusweiler on deck for Ty Wimpkin. Ty got the start here on senior day. Pitch. Hit into right field for a base hit. Here comes Harris around third. Here comes a throw to the plate. Cut off. Another RBI single by Eli Plasman. Up to bat. Number 25, Grady. So Harris scores. Stopping at second was Bosselman. And on at first is Eli Plasman. He's going to bring up Grady Gusweiler. We're going to have a pinch runner. Quentin McKill. We're going to. I got. Mason McQuillan, <laughs> Mason McQuillan. I always have every McQuillan in the game when when Mason plays for some reason. <laughs> Heck, I had Logan playing last week. <laughs> well, she was playing. She was playing on the diamond to our left, just not on the one that we're watching. <laughs> so Mason comes on to run at first. Hunter Bossom was at second. First at bat for Grady. Grady on the season, 261 has... Seven runs batted in, 14 walks, and seven stolen bases. First to bat for Grady here. Wall comes set. Pitch to Grady. Strike called. Rams with runners at first and second. One out. They lead 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the fourth. Eric Field on senior day. Wall's 0-1 to Grady. Change up. Swung on and missed. Nice pitch by Wall. The junior lefty wall comes set. 0-2 pitch to Gus Weiler. Old Tapper, third base side foul. 73 pitches by Wall. He has 36 strikes. Has not struck anybody out yet. 0-2 pitch to Grady. Fouled back. He has walked three. He's only given up three hit. Well, yeah, he's only given up three hits. Or four hits. Forgot to add the one this inning. Four hits, three runs, three earned runs. Has not struck anybody out and has walked three. O2 pitch to Grady. Swung on. Fouled at. Whoa. VR with an error at third base. <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, two to Grady. Outside, one ball and two strikes. McQuillan on at first as a pinch runner. Bosselman is down at second. He walked. Harris, who was hit by a pitch, has already scored. 4-1 Rams here in the bottom of the fourth. Wall comes set. 1-2 to Gus Weiler. Tap foul to play. Grady staying alive. In the coaches poll released earlier today, actually it was released last night, late last night, Rams came in at the number 18 team in Division Three this week. Wayne Trace is number 16. One, two, pitch to Grady. Low and inside, gets by the catcher, Will Brown, advancing to third as Bosselman. McQuillan goes down to second. So the Rams have two runners in scoring position now. Count to Gus Weiler as two balls and two strikes. Still action in the Delta bullpen as Wall slowly walks atop the mound. I think he's been hurting this inning quite a bit. Wall gets a sign from his catcher, Will Brown. He comes set, looks back at McQuill in a second. 2-2 two -two pitch to Gus Weiler. Swung on, drilled deep left field. Left fielder grabs it off the top of the grass. Scoring from third is Hunter Bosselman on the sacrifice fly. So Grady gets the RBI. F7 on the put out. Nice grab. Nice grab out there by Caleb Lance in left field. Stealing another. That's about the third time in the last three games Grady's have a hit stolen. Top of the lineup, Connor Wolfram. Connor walked and scored in the first. Flew out deep to center. Driving Joel Arroyo Sierra way back in the third. So McQuillan is now at second. He's the lone runner for the Rams. Rams have scored two here in the fourth. They lead 5-1. Brody Wall has gone the distance thus far. First pitch to Connor Wolfram. Strike call. Getting close to 100. He's got 84 pitches for Wall. He has 44 strikes. Lady Rams were trailing 4-1 to one in the top of the fifth. Next door. Wall steps off, fakes the throw, chases McQuillan back to second. Slight breeze now kicking up here at Tenora High School, blowing from left to right. Pitch. A little bit in the dirt. And off the shin guard of Brown. Deflects a little bit to the left side of the plate. Well, it's enough to allow McQuillan to move up a base. So McQuillan's down to third on the wild pitch. So McQuillan's at third with two outs. One ball, one strike to Connor Wolfram. Wolfram on the mound here. Got the start on senior day. But Connor's just a junior. 1-1 one, one pitch. High and away. Two balls and a strike to Connor. Connor was 278 coming in with five runs batted in on the season. Limited action. Walls 2-1 to Connor Wolfram. No one's high and away. Ball three. Three balls and a strike. Caden Radzik is on deck for Tenora. Three one pitch to Connor swung on high fly ball to center field. Much easier shot this time for Arroyo Sierra. He puts it away to retire Connor Wolfram for the third out here in the inning. The Rams they score two runs this inning, and they do so on one base hit, no errors, and they leave one after. Four innings of play here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Drop zone pizzeria scoreboard shows the Sonora Rams five and the Delta Panthers, they have one. 
Clubhouse Pizza in A is your small town alternative for happy food at a happy place. Featuring one of the area's best pizzas, Clubhouse Pizza in A will not disappoint. Wing Wednesdays, buffets on Thursday, happy hour on Friday. That's just a few of the things Clubhouse Pizza in A has for specials. Stop out after the game for amazing food, great drinks, and an awesome atmosphere. Hours of operation are Wednesday through Saturday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. Or order some takeout at 419-658-2720. Come by for a visit at 210 East Main Street in Nay, or check them out on Facebook at Clubhouse Pizza in Nay. Rachel and Jason Gilliam and the great staff at Clubhouse Pizza in Nay are proud supporters of the Rams. Back here to Group Field. Well, a lot of changes for the Tenor Rams. We'll just run down the entire defense now. Connor Wolfram still on the mound. Dalton Wolfram comes in from center field to behind the plate. At first base, Hunter Bosselman moves from behind the plate to first base. Mason McQuillan stays in the game. He goes to second base for Eli Plasman. Radzik still at short. Ward still at third. Outfield, Aiden Mosier comes in for Corbin Castillo in the left field. Center field is Grady Gusweiler in for Dalton Wolfram, who moves to behind the plate. And Luke Harris stays in right field. Number 11, the shortstop, Bryce Gillen. So for Delta, the top of the fifth inning here, Bryce Gillen going to step in. Top of the lineup, one, two, and three for Delta. Connor Wolfram's first pitch is high. Ball one. We like said for Connor's pitch, really effective. Four innings pitched. Just two hits, one run. That was unearned. He struck out four, and he's walked two. Last inning, Connor struck out the side. Pitch is low. Don't give up that two pitch. balls and no strikes to Bryce Gillen. Come on, buddy. Lady Rams are down 6-1 to one in the top of the six as they play the 19-1 Brian Golden Bears in a tournament tune-up next door. 2-0 pitch from Wolfram to Gillen. He's fouls it off first base side. That heads out of play. Gillen doubled his last plate appearance. Pitches outside, ball three. And that <coughs> pivotal third inning, he was actually thrown out trying to go from second to third with nobody out. And the Panthers proceeded to load the bases after that, which always seems to happen. 3-1 pitch from Wolfram to Gillen. Just misses outside. Bryce Gillen with a leadoff walk to start the top of the fifth inning. Up to the plate, number 10, Braden Roofer. Braden Roofer is going to step in for Delta. 256, four runs batted in and nine steals for Roofer. Here today, he is 0 for 2. Reached on the fielder's choice in the third. Bats from the left side, Roofer does. 23 steals for Gillen. He's at first. Always a threat to go. Pitches outside. B.J. Morlock's been warming up twice on two separate occasions. He's not warming up currently. But he should be ready to go. Wolfram's 1-0 pitch. Gillen, big lead over there. Throw over. Possible one slaps a tag on him, but he's safe. <clears throat> pitch to Roofer. High. Come ball on, two. Come on, come on two balls and no strikes. Be you, buddy. Relax. Follow through. Wolfram comes set, looks at the runner at first. 2 0 pitch. High and away ball three. Three balls and no strikes to the number two hitter, Braden Roofer. Bryce Gillen on at first. He walked. Roofer one pitch away from putting runners on first and second with nobody out. Three 0 pitch. High and away ball four. Back to back walks have put. The Panthers in really good spot here in the fifth inning. Timeout. Head coach Brett Rollette makes the slow, the slow, the slow walk out there to talk to his junior righty Connor Wolfram. Morlock's ready. 
standing outside the fence, and B.J. will come in, and that'll be it for Connor. Very effective Pass performance seven. for Connor Wolfram. The two runners on are his responsibility. We'll have the numbers for Connor, and we'll be back right after this here on Tenor Rams Live. High standards, hard work, sincerity. For the past 37 years, those have been the day-to-day -day ideals behind Bat and Stevens, regarded as one of the finest auto body repair shops in the six-county area. Our technicians understand how you feel about your vehicle, so they're trained to know your automobile inside and out. Bat and Stevens will provide you with fine workmanship at a fair price. We will work closely with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. We believe full service is one of the keys to complete collision repair. Once your vehicle enters our shop, you can be sure it is handled with the utmost attention to detail at every phase of the repair process. Our skilled professionals are committed to this high standard of quality on every job, from small dings to major collision damage. Whether it is just fitting decorative trim pieces or restoring your vehicle's entire structure, we work on all makes and models, foreign and domestic, including recreational vehicles. Our state-of-the-art equipment helps us perform every kind of job with a lifetime guarantee. Free estimates can be obtained anytime and loaner cards are available by appointment. Bat and Stevens Body Shop has also been selected as the 2020 Crescent News Reader's Choice Awards Favorite Body Shop in the Six County Area. Bat and Stevens Body Shop, located in downtown Jewel, Ohio. 419-497-3111. That's 419-497-3111. Back here at Groove Field, B.J. Morlock comes in the game for the Rams. For B.J., no wins, one loss, one huge save. Well, that was over at Fairview. Five innings pitched, two runs, one earned run. He's allowed two hits, walked four, and struck out six. B.J. has an ERA of 1.40 on the season. So B.J., similar to Fairview, comes right into the frying pan here with runners at first and second and nobody out to the plate. Now will be Joel Arroyo Sierra. Arroyo Sierra. Sierra reached on an error by the second baseman the last inning. He is officially 0 for 2. 242 on the season for Sierra. Again, Lady Rams trail 6-1 next door. Morlock comes set. First pitch to Arroyo Sierra. Low. Nice stop by Dalton Wolfram. Right, and condolences to the Morlock family. And BJ lost his grandfather yesterday. So, best. I mean, we support the the Morlocks and wish them nothing but the best during these uh, tough times here. So, a little bit of relief for BJ here. Kind of clear his mind a bit. One zero pitch. Swung on little blooper. Actually, his back goes Harris. Looks like it was in shallow right. Harris comes in and makes the catch. To retire Sierra or Arroyo Sierra for the first out. That's a big out. F9 on the put out for the first out. Runners had to retreat back to their bases. Gillen back to second and Roofer back to first. But yes, nothing but the best from the Ram family to the Morlocks for the loss of Bill. BJ comes set. Breaking ball is high, ball one. 5-1 Rams lead here in the top of the fifth inning. Delta have runners at first and second with one out now. BJ comes set. There's a 1-0 pitch coming to Moore. Down to first base. Throw, they got him! Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. Oh, he was out, cowboy. Dalton Wolfram with a rifle down the first base. Bosselman slapped the tag on Roofer. Second base, well, the infield umpire ruled him safe, but <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure that that was a tag and an out down there at first. Two balls and no strike as a count to Moore. Yeah, he will. Brady Moore steps in. <laughs> Swung on and missed. Two balls and a strike. Moore reached on there in the second and scored, was hit by a pitch in the third. That would have been a huge out down there as well. Two balls, one strike. Runners lead from first and second. Morlock comes set. 2-1 pitch to Moore. 
Fouled off down the right field side, out of play. Two balls and two strikes. More activity in the Rams' bullpen. Eli Plasman loosening up down there. You know that flag just don't look Connor Wolfram in line for the win. <laughs> the calmest day I think we've had out here. Mm -hmm. sure. Two two pitch from Morlock to Moore. Whoa, nice stop by Dahl. Wolf from fires down to second base. They got the runner picked off. Radzik to Ward. Ward chases it back to second. Now there's two runners. One of them is going to be out. Now we could get a double play out of this. One of those runners should be out. They both occupied second, and Ward tagged them, but I'm not sure what, <laughs> not sure what happened. So the runner went back to second. The runner who was at second went back to first. And Delta is right back where they started with runners at first and second to count to more as two balls and two strikes. First time the Rams have botched a rundown this season that I can remember. 3-2 pitch from Morlock to Moore. He looks back at the runner. Now comes set. Payoff pitch. Hit second base side. McCullough up with it to Radzik a second. Radzik's relay in time. Second double play here today. That one went 4-6-3. For the twin killing in the inning for Delta, they threaten. They do not score. For Delta, no runs. They do not get a hit. No ram errors and only one runner left after the double play. We're through four and a half innings here at Group Field at Tenora High School. It is the Tenora Rams 5 and the Delta Panthers 1 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postoma Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. That's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Here comes more Tenora Rams sports action. Back at Group Field here at Tenora High School, we have a new pitcher for Delta. Brady Moore comes in and re in place of uh, Brady Wall. So Brady Moore will be your new pitcher for Delta, and we'll get the stats as long as I can find them. Of course, I can't. I mean, I have them. My desk full of papers that I have here. Can't find stuff when I need it. So for... That's the Oak Harbor softball stats, which has no bearing on this game whatsoever. <laughs> oh... That would involve my Wednesday game. <laughs> yeah, I like to over-prepare. I bring stats for games that I don't even need. Now batting number 11, Caden Radzik. So for Delta, Brady Moore, 2-4 and four on the season. ERA of 4.89. 24 and a third innings pitched. Four more. He allowed 35 hits, 34 runs, 17 earned runs. He's walked 10 and struck out 34. So, Brady Moore, your new pitcher. First batter he will face is Caden Radzik. Radzik grounded out in the first, was hit by a pitch, and stole two bases and scored a run in the third. Moore's pitch is outside one ball and one strike. Second base now. For Delta is Joel Royal Sierra. No, it's not, because that's his old number. Pitch to Caden is a ball. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> K 
Caden gets hit in the same spot he got hit in the second hit or third inning. So down the first goes Caden Radzik after getting hit for the second time. Luckily, that was a breaking ball that hit him right in the back. <laughs> Five one Rams lead is a bat here in the bottom of inning number five. Dalton Wolfram to the plate for Tenora. First pitch to Dalton is outside. Dalton back to back RBI singles. Dalton also has one steal and he was caught stealing in the third. So second base is Aiden Coder. I got nine, I can get those off. So Coder in the second. Okay. Pitch to Wolfram was a strike. One ball and one strike. That guy was really So Brady Moore. I'm and a relief throws over to first base. Radzik back <laughs> with a head first dive. Well, from 1 1 pitch is fouled off right side. Out of play. One ball and two strikes. Brody Wall started. Brady Moore in relief. 1 2 to Wolfram. There goes Radzik. What a jump. They turn around, throw to second. Radzik caught stealing for the second time today. The Rams have a runner tossed out a second. Coach Renolette walks away, throws the arms in the air, <laughs> puts the head down, and Caden just trots right on by. So that's the first out here in the inning. One, two, pitch to Wolfram from Moore, swung on, fouled off again, first base side, out of play. One hour and 40 minutes old we are here in this senior night game. Bottom of the fifth inning, Rams with a 5-1 lead. Moore's pitch, outside, ball two. Radzik got a heck of a jump. Unfortunately, Moore did not come to the plate. 2-2 two -two pitch to Wolfram. Stays high. Count goes full to Dalton at three balls and two strikes. Dalton, 4-14. Got his average back over the 400 mark. Dipped for like a game under, under 400. Now it's back over. Payoff pitch hit second shortstop side. Gillen up with it. Throwed high. Said the first baseman came down with the ball. Roofer ahead of Wolfram. So that's the second out. Throw was high from Gillen order to Roofer. Roofer leaped in the air as Wolfram came across the base. They said the first baseman came down with his foot on the bag before Wolfram crossed it. So that's 6-3 on the putout for out number two. Taron Ward to the plate. Pitch to Taron as a strike. <laughs> Taron 0 for 2 came in batting 349. Oh, one pitch coming. Fouled off. First base side. Tearing down. No balls and two strikes. One thing I kind of always wanted to do is work in a restaurant setting. Outside of Roofer, Moore has the second most. You want to be a chef? Innings no. No, I think I on mind. the team here in 2023. <laughs> 0-2 to Ward is high. One ball and two strikes to Terran. Give you the line on wall when we get a chance. 1-2 pitch. Terran drives it deep center field. Back goes Arroyo Sierra. Puts it away for out number three. Second time. Rams have driven it deep to center field. Only be tracked down by Arroyo Sierra. So the Rams go quickly in inning number five for Tenora. No runs, no hits, no Panther errors, and the Rams do not leave anybody on base. We're through five innings of play here at Tenora High School's Group Field. With the Rams leading 5-1 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard.
Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. Back at Groove Field. 5-1 Rams lead as we head to the top of the six. Next door, bottom of the seventh inning, Lady Rams trail a very talented NWOAL champion, Brian Lady Golden Bears, 7-2. And a matchup of two of the three top pitchers in the area, including Paige Racisa. Throw her in the mix. And those probably are the top three in Northwest Ohio, at least in our area for sure. For Delta, going to send up five, six, and seven to face B.J. Morlock. Morlock came in last inning in relief of Connor Wolfram. And got... Three huge outs. Up to the plate, number 42, Landon Griesinger. So Griesinger steps in, 240 on the season. 0 for 2, crowded into a 1-2-3 double play in the third. That was a bases loaded with one out. Kind of a turning point of the game. Warlock comes set, first pitch, swung on and missed. So for Connor Wolfram, he pitches four innings, allows two hits, one run that was unearned. He struck out four and walked four. Morlock starts his second inning of relief. 0-1 pitch from BJ to Griesinger. Drives it in the gap. Gus Weiler, another fantastic catch by Grady. Grady on his horse. In left center field, threw the glove down, took a tumble, and made the catch. Now batting number eight, wow. Luke Schlatter. Another, <laughs> between him and Luke Harris tonight, got two of the better catches of the season. Schlatter steps in. Had a single and an RBI in the second and struck out in the fourth. Morlock comes set, pitch, strike on the outside corner. 5-1, five. Five Rams lead here in the top of the sixth here on Senior Day. Oh, one pitch coming. Swung on and miss. Slaughter. Nice Quickly down, no balls and two strikes. B.J. works from the third base side of the mound. 0-2 pitch. Tap foul, third base side. Ward scoops it up. Right in front of Coach Lefevre over there. Coach Lefevre, 20 years at Delta, 308 wins, 211 losses. And he's had a rough last couple seasons. Did not win a game last year. And has won just four this year. Pitch swung on and missed. Down goes Slaughter for the strikeout. That's out number two. Don't bring up Brody Wall. Now batting number 21, Aiden Coder. Going to have a pinch hitter. Aiden Coder steps in. So Coder was the pinch hitter for Wall. Locks pitch swung on and missed. Strike one. Wall walked and struck out when he was in the game. Oh, one pitch coming from BJ. Didn't have the full grip on that one. Hit about halfway between the mound and the plate. One ball and one strike. Be back here tomorrow where the Archibald Blue Streaks come visit. Gus, you ever watch Major League? 1-1 one, one pitch. Low, two balls and a strike. 
Yeah, you did you. Caleb Lance on deck. Did you? I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I do it myself. Warlocks 2-1 to Coder. Just misses inside. Three balls and a strike. Nobody on two outs here at the top of the six. It's 5-1 Rams lead. Morlocks 3-1 to Coder. Strike call on the outside corner. 3-2. Count is full. To Aiden Coder. Swung on and missed. Down goes Coder. Morlock strikes out two in the inning. For Delta. No runs. No hits. No ram errors. And nobody left on base. Heading to the bottom of inning number six here at Group Field at Tenora High School. Still Tenora five. And the Delta Panthers won. We'll be back after this time out here on Tenor Rams Live. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Second inning of work for Brady Moore for the... Panthers of Delta. Brady came in relief of Brody Wall last inning for Wall. His book is complete. We'll give you the numbers on Wall. He pitched four innings, allowed four hits, five runs, four earn runs, did not strike anybody out, and walked three. He can lose it. He cannot win it. For the Rams, Connor Wolfram in line for the win. Two solid innings of release by B.J. Morlock as well. Tenora, middle part of the order, 5, 6, and 7. Harris, Bosselman, and Castile scheduled to hit. First pitch to Harris, strike called. Riley Peters on deck to hit for Hunter Bosselman. First pitch to Harris is a strike called. Wall winds it up. Or wall. Moore winds it up, pitches a ball, one ball and one strike. Brady Moore's 1-1 one, one pitch to Luke Harris inside, leans him back, two balls and a strike. 5-1 Rams here to the bottom of the sixth inning. Final week of regular season baseball here at Group Field. Pitch swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes. We'll have two more home games. So if you miss senior night, you can still get out here and watch the guys play. Tomorrow versus Archibald in the tournament game. Sectional semifinals Friday. Harris sends a foul. First base side out of play. They'll play either a rematch of this game or the Ottawa Hills Green Bears who defeated the Rams last year in the district finals at Defiance High School. 2-2 two -two pitch. Harris follows it off first base side again, out of play. Dang. Last year in the I district like so. finals, I believe the Golden Bears beat the Rams four to one. Yeah. In the Tenora ah. season at 21 and four. Two two pitch. This one's driven into right center field. Over goes Preby to make the catch to retire Harris. So Riley Peters will be the pinch hitter. So Privy, nice pitch or nice pitch, nice catch over there. So Riley Peters gonna pinch it for Bosselin. 
for Peters, 188 on the season. 16 at bats for Peters, three hits, three runs, and six runs batted in. First pitch to Riley as a ball. Aiden Mosier steps into the on-deck circle for Tenor. He will pinch hit for Plasma. Drives it inside the bag at first. Peters hits the bag. Long single for Peters. The ball was bobbled by the right fielder. So Peters on the pinch hit. Sends it the opposite way just inside the bag at first for a single. Aiden Mosier is going to step in for Tenor. First at bat for Aiden here on senior night. I have a timeout. Head coach Jay Lefevre going to go out and have a conversation. And I think that's going to be it. We're going to have a pitching change. And we'll be back with the new pitcher right after this timeout. <laughs> Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Tador High School, Landon Griesinger is your new pitcher. He is 0-2, an ERA of 4.98, 19 and two-thirds innings pitched. He's pitched in six games. He started two, 29 hits, 24 runs, 14 earned runs. He's walked eight, and he's struck out five in those 19 and two-thirds innings pitched. So Griesinger is the third pitcher to work here for Delta. Aiden Mosier will be at the plate for the Rams. For Aiden, that's his first at bat. Mosier, 273 on the season, has 18 hits, five runs batted in. He's got 17 walks, which leads the Rams, and has 16 stolen bases. So Aiden Mosier, right. that's his first plate appearance. Peters is on the first. Riley... Opposite field single just inside the bag at first. Rams lead 5-1 to one as they bat here in the bottom of inning number 6 here on senior day. Senior night, whatever you want to call it. And then Greasinger comes set. First pitch. Low and outside. Ball one to Aiden Mosier. Righty Greasinger turns and throws over to first base. Back safely is Ryan Peters. Ryan, Riley, <laughs> Riley Peters. If that was Ryan over there, he would have been picked off. <laughs> Pitch outside, two balls and no strikes to Aiden Mosier. I don't think Ryan would have made it back in time to the bag. <laughs> Grease Singers 2-0. Strike call. Speaking of Grease Singers, the Phoenix Theater at the mall actually honored, oh, you ever heard I think it was before? a 40th anniversary of Grease, and they had a playing Sunday, and I think there's another playing Wednesday at 7 o'clock. So if you want to go watch Grease at the movie theater, you can do that at Phoenix Theaters here in Defiance. If you look on their website, they got a lot of anniversary movies they're honoring this year. Mosier fouls it off. First base side out or third base side out of play. Two balls and two strikes. Like, I think they're honoring Big Lebowski. You can go watch that. Uh, Christmas Story. They're playing that at Christmas time. So you can go to the Phoenix Theater and watch the Christmas Story, even though you've seen it 700 times. You've probably never seen it in a movie theater. 2-2 two -two pitch way outside. Brown snags it before it headed to the backstop. 
Count to Mosier is full. Three balls and two strikes. One out. Peters on at first. So if you haven't been out to the Phoenix Theaters, I suggest you do so. Pitch is outside. Ball four. Down to first base goes Mosier with a one out walk. Peters heads down to second. And Mosier's on at first. Mason McQuillan's going to step in for the first at bat for Mason. McQuillan has runners at first and second with one out. Singer's pitch outside. I nice stopped by Will Brown. But if you haven't been out to the new theaters in Defiance, go, go check it out. It's a, it's a fantastic complex they have out there. Massive, massive upgrades. Outside, ball two. Got heated seats. Sometimes those seats get a little too warm. <laughs> One thing for sure, the old theaters, you always had to bring a jacket with you because you about froze to death half the time. 2-0 pitch is low. Ball three with these new theaters that they have, or new seats they have at the theaters. You don't have to worry about that. You can kick back like you're in your recliner at home, kick on the heat. 3-0 pitch to McQuillan. Strike called. You get free refills and you get free popcorn as well. So you could go out there and eat all the popcorn you want. And, and all the drinks you want. You may be very uncomfortable when you leave, but 3-1 pitch to McQuillan. Swung on and missed. The count goes full. 3-2 to Mason. One out. Runners at first and second. So it's kind of a free advertisement for Phoenix Theaters there. <laughs> 3-2 pitch coming to Mason. Low and inside. That's going to load him up. McQuillan trots down to first base. Peters goes down to third. Mosier goes down to second. And stepping in is Grady Gusweiler. Grady had a hit stolen with him in his last plate appearance. Nice catch out there by Caleb Lance and left. So Grady, bases loaded with one out, steps in. First pitch, strike call. Grady, 261 on the season with seven runs batted in. Perfect opportunity for a couple more right here. Pitch to Grady is high. Yeah, I've been standing the whole time. You sit down. Count evens at one and one. Yeah, you better sit down and talk to me. talk to me. You want a pop or anything? No, I just had one, but you want one? No, thanks. One ball, one strike. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. no, yeah. <laughs> yeah no. A little bit low. Coach Rudder buying snacks down there for everybody below us. <laughs> He's going to send something up here. 2-1 two one, two one pitch coming to Grady from Greasinger. Inside, Grady spins out of the way. Grady thought he got hit. Umpire says no. 25. 3-1 is the count to Grady. Bases full of Rams. They lead 5-1 here in the bottom of the six on senior day. Greasinger winds it up. It's 3-1 to Grady. Outside ball four. So that's another RBI for Grady. Gets this one on a walk. So Peter scores. Makes it 6-1. Down to third. Goes Mosier, down to second, goes McQuillan, and Grady is on at first. Top of the lineup. B.J. Morlock, first at bat for B.J. Yeah. Strike called. So B.J. came in in relief of Connor Wolfram. Pitched two great innings in relief B.J. has so far. Pitch to B.J. outside, strike called. Two ball or no balls and two strikes to B.J. Morlock. Landon Griesinger's pitch. High. One ball and two strikes. Base is still full of Rams. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. They lead 6-1. Over Delta. One third baseman was pitching, but I believe he's on. One, two, pitch coming to BJ. Drills it down the line, just foul in left field. Yeah, I know BR and Wayno are coming to Hills. Delta travels to Ottawa Hills on Wednesday. And the Rams play the winner of that game here Friday. For those of you coming, you'll need a ticket for that game. You have to buy it online. OHSAA slash tickets, I believe. Backslash tickets. 
One two pitch to BJ. The swall fouled off first base side. Warlock stays alive. One ball and two strikes. Base is full of Rams. They have scored one here in the sixth. The only thing I'm disappointed about is the five pitches. Landon Griesinger on relief. And the two errors. One two pitch. Breaking ball stays high. Two balls and two strikes to Morlock. Three singers, two, two. Low ball, three. Wall started, went the first four innings. He allowed five runs, four earned runs. Moore pitched an inning in the third. He allowed a hit and a run. Three singer on in relief. 3-2 count coming to Morlock. Payoff pitch. Swung on, tapped foul. Third base side, down the line it goes. You put it there for me. Come on, five. One half back here, kid. Let's Runners go. go back to their base. Plasman picks up the ball down the left field line. Junior righty. Oh, man. Landon Griesinger on in relief for the Panthers. He winds it up. 3-2 pitch coming to B.J. Morlock. Low ball four. Another run for the Rams. Morlock gets an RBI on the walk. So the Rams now lead seven to one. Scoring was Aiden Mosier from third. Mason McQuillan goes down to third. Grady Gusweiler goes down to second. And B.J. Morlock trots down the first. That's going to be it for... Greasinger, as Coach Lefevre comes out, we'll have another pitching change, and we'll tell you all about that right after this time out. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The Law Office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. BSN Sports, the recognized leader in team athletic gear. BSN forms partnerships with educators, coaches, and students to build school pride, student engagement, and community spirit. Our partnerships give you access to the most brand names in the industry with all of the hottest products at the best prices. From Nike to Wilson to Under Armour, we can customize any team needs. Since 1972, BSN Sports has brought you the brands that make you untouchable on the field, the court, or anywhere else you play your sport. Contact BSN local sports rep Jim Gares for any of your sports needs at 419 419- 576-8940. Back at Sonora High School. On in relief, Brandon Preby will be the fourth pitcher to work for Delta. Rams have scored two here in the sixth to grab a 7-1 lead. They still have the bases loaded with one out, so Preby on in relief comes in from right field. Brady Moore, I believe, goes out to right field. So Preby comes on from right field to the mound. And Moore heads out to right field for Coach Lefebvre and the Panthers. Lady Rams were down 7-2. That game has ended. Try to get you a final on that. Coach Fairchild tuning up for his Wednesday trip. Him and the Lady Rams head to Holland on Wednesday. That's a 4 o'clock start. And as long as I don't break down on the way there, I'll bring that game to you. <laughs> 4 o'clock first pitch. Caden Radzik steps in. Brandon Preby. The senior righty's first pitch to Radzik is a strike. Yeah. Caden stole two bases, scored a run, and then the fifth was hit by a pitch. He's been hit by a pitch twice, and he was caught stealing. 
much to the dismay of Coach Reddlehead and <laughs> trifecta for Caden. <laughs> Got hit again. So Caden goes down to first base, hit by a pitch, and ironically, he gets an RBI somehow on that. Scoring was Mason McQuillan with run number three this inning. That's number eight. Grady goes down to third. Down to second goes B.J. Morlock. And stepping in is Dalton Wolfram with the bases full of Rams with one out and Wolfram gets smoked in the back. So Dalton <laughs> picks up an RBI. The hard got two RBIs the hard way here. Scoring was Grady Gusweiler. Down to first base with Dalton Wolfram. P.J. Morlock is at third. Caden Radzik is at second. And Taryn Ward steps in. Ward 0 for 3. Taryn's due. Preview's first pitch is outside. Thank you, Ray. We appreciate you tuning in. Checking out the Rams. Pittsburgh Sioux always watching. Bridget's here with us, so she's not watching. John watched Saturday, right? Yeah. Is that a wedding? Watching the ball game. What better way to <laughs> pitch to Terrence a strike? One ball, one strike, one out. And then John Zonry wasn't here after the national anthem. I said, play ball. 1-1 one, one pitch. Preview to Ward with the bases full of Rams. Strike called on the outside corner. Rams lead 9-1. A single here by Ward ends it. One out. Any run here will give the Rams a win. Previous one, two, two, Ward. He leans back out of the way. He almost got hit. Two, two, pitch, one out. Bases full of Rams. Rams lead 9 1. Previous pitch to Taryn Ward. Oh, and behind him it goes. Scoring is Morlock on the slide. It's 10 to 1. Aaron can still win the game with the single. Runners move up. Radzik down to third. Dalton Wolfram down to second. Count to Taron goes full at three balls and two strikes. On deck for Tenora is Luke Harris. Three, two, pitch coming to Ward. Inside, ball four. Down the first base goes Ward. Number one, Luke Harris. Honestly, don't know that the Rams have got to hit this inning. They have batted around. They have got one hit, says John. That is a that was a Hunter or Ryan uh, Riley Peters single inside the bag. So the Rams have batted around. They have scored five runs. Infield comes in for Delta. Harris at the plate. First pitch to Luke is a strike. Luke early this inning. He. How many have they sent to the plate? Seven. Luke swings and fouls it off first base side out of play. 10-1 Rams here in the bottom of the six. Base is still loaded, one out. And with any luck, this will be the last batter of the game. So Harris already batted this inning. The Rams have sent 10 to the plate. Just misses him inside. One ball and two strikes to Luke Harris. <laughs> Preby winds it up. Pitch coming to Luke Harris. Harris kind of inside out of that swing. More of self-defense than anything. Fouled it off first base side. Count stays at one and two. Previews one two. <laughs> Swung on and miss. Down goes Harris. Now at the plate, number ten, Riley Keaton. Second out of the inning, and Harris has made both outs. A bad day for Luke Harris at the at the plate, but in the field, Luke made the play of the game on that diving catch in right field. Grady's is one a. Pitch to Peters. 
outside. Ball one. Riley started this whole mess with a single down the line at first. Came around to score on either a hit batsman or a walk. One or the other. 1-0 pitch to Peters is inside. Will Brown snags it. Stay tuned. We'll have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments post game show and the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game. Two one pitch to Peters from Preby is outside corner strike called. <laughs> Two one pitch coming to Peters. Peters hits the second base side. The second baseman has the ball go through his legs. Scoring is Radzik, and that will end it for the Rams. There you go. So Peters sends a hard grounder to the second baseman. Went up the heel of his glove. So Peters with an RBI on the play. And that ends it. As Caden Radzik scored to give the Rams six runs in the inning. So Tnor gets six runs on one hit in the no error, one error. That actually was an error at the end of the game. One error, and the Rams leave three on base. Final from Tenora here on senior night. Rams with an 11-1 win. Tenora goes to 19-4 on the season. And for Delta, they fall to 4-19. Coming up, we'll have the Higby, or Higby and Boy. We'll have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments postgame show right after this. Looking for home or auto insurance? What about building for retirement? Or looking to start a small investment portfolio for your family? Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services of Defiance has you covered. Tim Bidlack of Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services has over 10 years of investment experience. Tim can assist in estate planning, IRAs, 401k investments, among other financial planning areas. Need home or auto insurance? Welcome Austin Bidlack. He can assist you on those. At Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, they will work one-on-one -on -one with you to make sure your home, auto, and business are protected. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services are located at 912 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Call Tim or Austin at 419-438-0023 today for a free quote. You can visit them online or on their Facebook page as well. Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services wish the best to all the Tenora Rams athletes this season. Back at Group Field, Rams with an 11-1 win on Senior Day for the visiting Delta Panthers. One run, two hits, one error for Tenora. Scored 11 runs on just five hits and two errors for the Rams. Rams scored in every inning but the fifth. Rams started the scoring in the first inning with a single run. Delta came back and tied it at one in the second. Rams with runs in the first, second, and third took a 3-1 lead, added two in the bottom of the fourth. It was actually a close game until this last inning here. was 5-1 going into the bottom of the sixth. Rams put a sixth spot on the board as Delta tried to get some seniors in the game and some pitchers with less experience against the Rams. Fall 11-1 to the host of the Tenora Rams. Rams, as we said, picked up win number 19. They Actually moved into the coaches poll at number 18 this week. Two spots behind number 16, Wayne Trace. So don't go anywhere. Tomorrow we'll be back here. The Archibald Blue Streaks will be here for our final regular season home game. And then Friday we're back here for the tournament. For Tenora, Colin, or Colin, Connor Wolfram picks up the win. Four innings. Two hits, one run, not earned, struck out four and walked four. B.J. Morlock came in, and considering the circumstances for B.J., um, pitched fantastic. Two innings of work for B.J., did not allow a hit or a run, struck out two, and did not walk anybody. Again, condolences to the Morlock family uh, as B.J. lost his grandfather yesterday. So uh, Ram family and the community, uh, warm hearts and best wishes and hugs to the Morlock family for uh, the, uh, during this hard time. So, need anything, you know, that anybody in the Ram family is there to help you guys. So, stay tuned. Coming up, we will have the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game, and we will do it right after this. 
Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back at Tenora High School on the day the Rams honored their class of six seniors, Luke Harris, Corbin Castile, Ty Wimpkin, Eli Plasma, and Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward, Rams picked up a 11-1 victory over the Delta Panthers. Welcome to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. And we will give our player of the game today tonight, this evening, whatever you want to refer to it as. We'll give it to Connor Wolfram. Connor, his first varsity start, goes four innings, allowed just two hits, one run, did not allow an earned run, struck out four and walked four. Uh, Connor, 82 pitches and 39 strikes. And Connor around the plate the entire game. And for Connor, in the fourth inning, he struck out the side of the visiting Delta Panthers. So our Higby Embroidery Player of the Game will go to Rams starting pitcher, picking up his first varsity career win, will be Connor Wolfram. So thank you for joining us, as always. And thank our fantastic sponsors for making all of this possible. Sponsors, BSN Sports. Mr. Jim Garris bringing you your stats. Weber Bookkeeping. Mommy Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza, and a Fairchild Family Chiropractic, Optimal Performance and Fitness. Thank you, Jake Rubio. Trap Zone Pizzeria, two locations, Stryker and Ayersville. Higby Embroidery Signs Excavating. Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop, Sonora Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postuma Insurance and Investments, and finally, Matt Mayfield Engineering Corporation. Start your Matt career today. Go to mattcareers.com. Check out all the job openings. And submit your application today. Sign on bonus, $1,000. So you or somebody you know is in look good job, have them stop by the lobby at 21 Seneca Street here in Defiance and fill an application at Mayville Engineering, $1,000 sign on bonus. So for Keith Brown, Rams pick up win 19 with an 11-1 win here on Senior Day. See everybody tomorrow here versus Archibald. Have a good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio.